Welcome, planet Earth. It's another beautiful day here in Southern California as we kick off the last group for the run of 16 of the StarCraft II World Championship Series, Challenger Europe Edition. I'm Nathanius, joined by Katz, as we get to day four in a row. We did it. We made it through a whole long weekend of, uh, of WCS Challenger run of 16. Don't worry, though. There's, there's more coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, and today's groups are just the best, so they make are. sure you call all of your friends, tell everyone to get in here, because it's going to get pretty crazy. Activate the uh, the Powerpuff Girl hotline, let everybody know <laughs> it's time to watch WCS, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. And what more, uh, what more kind of excitement can we have? Uh, we're going to quickly go through the format again, because that's just what we do here. And as you can see, players show up, they play video games, they qualify. 16 players were spread out across four groups. We are done with pretty much all of those groups. We've just got one more today for Europe and America. Champions are going to be crowned in both regions because it feels good to wear the crown. But not only does it feel good to look good, it also feels good to have cash, money, cash, money, cash. And we've also got that on sale here today even if you get eliminated in last place you still walk away with some money that's pretty nice isn't it cats i love when money's on sale yeah oh it's a great feeling it's a fantastic feeling indeed for the low low price of winning a couple of games of starcraft how fantastic and with that being said let's take a look at the games of starcraft that we'll be playing today as we have wow some of the best the group and of them without Rambo. a doubt without a doubt yeah, so we've got Cyril going up against Sol to kick things off. It's going to be a nice Terran versus Zerg. And then also, we'll be getting into another Terran versus Zerg, Lambo and Marine Lord. So for those of you who have been complaining about how much Protoss we've had over the course of the last few days, we finally get a little break, just a little bit. Yeah, this is absolutely going to be my favorite day so far, I think, as far as, you know, just looking at the groups and thinking, wow. Wow. This is, wow. Yeah. Of course, as we're both extremely biased Protoss and Zerg players, I do think that it's worth mentioning to you that, um, did I say Protoss? You did, you did. It's you just called yourself a Protoss, morning. I'm pretty it's, sure. Yeah, it's, I'm that was... Terran somewhere, <laughs> somewhere here. Hi guys, it's early. Um, yeah, so we've got the lobby set up. This TVZ is going to be starting. I mean, Cyril, he shouldn't lose any games today. I don't right? know about that. Yeah. Should he though? Yeah. Seoul has been talked up by Cyril probably the most as one of the scariest European Terrans, especially come the late game. And they are practice partners. I mean, Cyril has to practice with someone. Does Sol he? Is, yeah, he does. And he, Seoul is one of the people that he, that he chooses. Uh, Seoul is a very, very strong Terran player. So we'll see. So he chooses Seoul. Well, Sol's he chooses like, Seoul, yeah. When like, you're Seoul, you choose. You don't. That's yeah. true. So like, it's like Seoul, or like, it's like all those practice partners are at like some cat cafe where Seoul just shows up. And <laughs> like, Who do I want to practice with today? Pretty much. I mean, yeah, if you're Seoul, you choose your practice partners. There's no doubt about that. It's when you're a professional gamer, you have to pick within your, within your realm, you know? That's so, fair. Uh, you, you, you know, don't want to practice with anyone from outside the realm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, it was always difficult for me, for example, to find practice with top Korean players, right? Because they were so much better. I didn't feel like I had like that much of a challenge to offer, right? So, so you wouldn't great, ask because yeah, otherwise, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, asking people, asking anybody, because they say yes, yeah, they they will say yes, but then they'll destroy you, and then you're like, oh. Yeah. Looks like our game might have uh, derped a little bit in the may loading or may not screen. Have. It may or may not have. Technically, it's Schrodinger's game of StarCraft because we don't know if it'll crash or if it'll if it'll load. Because sometimes one of the observers. But the longer it goes, longer the it goes. higher the chance that it crashed. Yeah. And uh, if it was for an observer, no. But no one disconnected. The game started. Look at that. Look at that. Indeed. Magic. Until until it leaves that screen, you don't know if it's on or if it's off. And here we are, we're loaded in a Thunderbird to start off. Some Terran versus Zerg for you on Sunday morning. He's the Red Terran player. He is Soul. And in the top left-hand corner, the god walking amongst men. He is Ensis Serol. <laughs> Some most would say the best player in the world. I mean, as of the end of last year, he was the best player in the world. And that title 
has yet to be passed on, Kat, so... Indeed. He's the official world champion. Until someone wins that title, or what is it, defeats him in gladiatorial combat? Um, I think... Yeah, I think that would. Yeah, I think that would work. Nobody, but nobody really tries that anymore with titles. Hunting like, contest, perhaps. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody goes up and throws a gauntlet on the ground in front of anyone. And he's like, <laughs> I want to fight you for the title. No one does that. Yeah, you know? that that should really yeah, be. A why thing, are we yeah. waiting till BlizzCon? <laughs> <laughs> there should be a tournament with with just like a, a, a gauntlet that that someone yeah. has. Yeah. Like I home think. story cops, should, they should have a gauntlet. And just go by go by old chivalry rules. If you want the title and you think you can beat the guy, just toss the glove. But what's down. the punishment for losing? Because I feel. Like, well, yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That wouldn't that's work for tournaments. We would we would deplete our, would, our pro scene pretty fast. That would that wouldn't be very good, I guess. No. So we need a different rule. Cyril playing very safe, as Cyril is often known to do. Um, this is something that, actually, we we talked about a very similar opening. Uh, with Cyril, and even when this doesn't work, he doesn't feel behind. So I, yeah, this we analyzed a game where where this didn't work, and I was like, all right, so you're right. behind now. What's uh, what what do you do to recover? He's like, I don't feel behind. I never feel be feel behind. <laughs> is what he said. Yeah, right I'm like, is, all right, man. That's that right there is why he's a world champ. Yep. Look at this though. Soul keeps his Reaper at home very intelligently. 200 IQ big brain Terran player here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't want to have your natural canceled. So you're talking about that. Cyril saying he doesn't feel behind. He does I hope not. he doesn't because his early lings did squat. Yeah, they did nothing. And this is, uh, this is again, their practice partners. So Soul very much uh, learned in the ways of Cyril. So leaving his uh, Reaper in spite of not scouting, right? He didn't really scout with an SUV whatsoever. Even that Marina Live is really important because you don't want him to send the Overlord over to the main early on to see. Oh, but the Lynx are going after the Marine. No! He knows Nate. No! Oh. Reaper will intercept. And chase the last Ling away. So this is a great opener for Soul. Soul is playing a little bit of protect the, the VIP right there. That poor Marine. He's seen some stuff to start this game, Cats. He killed, he killed two giant alien monster dogs and almost shot down a space blimp <laughs> while being ripped to pieces. And somehow he's still standing. Yep. He is patrolling to make sure that the Overlord doesn't come, but Cyril has already sent the Overlord further back. Not that there is much that Soul can do about it. I mean, you could always lift the barracks, maybe use a scan. I really like it when, Ter when Terran scan for it, though. It's, it's, a, it's a rare sight, and yet it's... A you like it? You like it as a Zerg. Yeah. Yeah, I like it as a Zerg, yeah. <laughs> that, that distinction should be made. I, I don't I don't think Terrence should scan for an Overlord. But the Overlord costs money and the scan is free, cats. That's what they say. Until it mines money. A many money. So there is going to be Cyril going for the very many queens and very good creep spread already. So he will be utilizing that early pool to some extent to kind of get out here a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Keep this map control. Yeah, so he's gonna poke against the Queens. Nothing crazy happening yet. We do have a Viking coming out for Soul, And he's researching Stim. And one of the big things that we've been seeing, uh, at least out of our European Terrans that have been playing versus Zergs, it's, uh, it's mech. It's lots of mech. And we had a little bit of that from our NA players, not a tremendous amount, but interested to see well, there's barracks is being added. That's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So I was saying he's getting the stim, so he's he's not kind of following that trend that we've been seeing. Indeed. So um, yeah, that will eBay as well. Solis, I think, doing very well to identify that this is a very macro-oriented map and that Cyril is very macro-oriented. Even with the three queens at the front, I think it's easy for him to assume that there's extra queens in the back. And if there's investment in that many queens, then chances are that there's not that big an army, especially with this many. Uh, creep tumors being spent and uh, and the third being taken, which I think Soul is aware of. Yep, very much so. Nice. Uh, he's just trying to use these Hellions to pressure on. You were talking about this yesterday, the Hellion retainment. It doesn't. Um, they don't really bully queens too much, mm -hmm. and it's not easy for them to actually stop this creep spread. Yeah. But just by virtue of being there, he has to have the queens on the edge of creep in order exactly. to spread his tumors. 
Yeah, and if you don't sacrifice the Hellions, I mean, if you were to sacrifice those Hellions, if Sol was to do that, he should have done so way long ago, right? Yeah. Because as the game progresses, there's going to be more units out, more queens out, more creep spread, and it will get more and more difficult. So at this point, I think you just want to keep him and go for something like a Hellbat push um, to aid your, you know, Marine tank or, or whatever. So I would love for Sol to bring these three really, really weak Hellions back because those are going to die in one shot each. Uh, repair them and then come back as Hellbats. Oh, look at that. It's like a brief moment of bonding. They both hate these rocks. <laughs> I'll throw a little acid spines at it and you can use a flamethrower on a giant boulder. Yeah, and the boulder is very, very powerful. In, in you'd need place. quite... I feel like you'd need something more than even a space flamethrower to destroy rocks like that, though. It doesn't really make sense, does it, cats? Well, no, it doesn't make sense. Rocks. I'm not sure about the. Um, like, if you I had a giant boulder in front of you, you what type of yeah. flamethrower are you going to use? I mean, no, no, none will melt it, right? Like, it's. I, I think that rocks are formed. In, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't believe so. I mean, is 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 what is lava? Exactly. Is that molten rock? Yeah. Okay, so so it can melt. There is a melting point. I don't think Hellions have it in them, though. Yeah, that's. Because then, how do they not instantly kill everything else if they could literally melt rock? Right. So, yeah. I mean, this Hellion shouldn't be able to attack rocks. That's all I'm trying to say, guys, okay? Just let me have this. You're absolutely right. And there is a little bit of a poke here for Sol. So this is a very interesting push. He's going to take the, the left-hand side as the rocks are still uh, up, but not for long. And Cyril has been very diligent about spreading creep onto the high ground anyway. So if Sol had, had, been, had taken that position, that would be troublesome. I really like that he took the position that has no creep, where his Marines can micro back. Yeah. He's going to fall back towards Siege Tanks. Banelings with speed are coming up. The Hellbats just holding by the tanks to keep Lings off of them. But there are way too many Hydralisks. And Cyril is going to be able to clean up this attack. The same time as the drop over by the third base. So he's putting pressure with the Marines outside the fourth. This is great by Sol. He also had great focus fire with the main links. Let's see if he can do it again. Picks off one, but not able to click on the rest, so he will have to back away. Better than losing the bio, I suppose. Absolutely. Another medevac's gonna move out. Sarah I think this has been amazing so far by Sol. I mean, I think he's making all the right choices. That was a 1-1 timing, well executed on both ends. Sure, he lost some stuff here and there, but for the most part, his army retention was great, and his and he picked off a lot of painlings. If we actually look at units lost, at resources lost, Serral is the one that lags or trails behind by near double the amount nice. of soul. So that's pretty sick. So soul off to a great start, as you were saying, mm -hmm. and it's got to feel good trying to clear out the creep. Knows the Zerg is on just the four bases at the moment. Generally speaking, we see the Terran want to try and get that fourth planetary up at some point after this. Yeah. He I'll could do a big see. push. He's he's almost at 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, and there is an unmorphed command center, Nate. We all aye know what that aye means. Aye. Yeah. Okay, okay, so there's that fourth base. Nice. So you just want to secure that while you're doing this big drop. And look at that. Three medevacs in the main. And this is dangerous because the infestation pit's at risk. He hasn't even started a hive, oh, wow. cats. This is huge. It's, a, it's actually dead. It's a, The lair is dead now. Sol is going to commit for it, as he should, and then get out. This is gigantic news for the Polish star. And yeah, we're going to see a PF at the fourth, as expected. So it's, you know, he's going to be playing pretty safe behind this, as he should, because he has a lead against the world champion. No, oh, yeah, this is awesome. He's doing a really good job. Yeah, clear some his, creep. His follow-up, I mean, he's, he's just going regular old marine tank. And the thing is, we normally talk about like an expiration timer on that once you get a Broodlords or enough Vipers to Blinding Cloud the tanks, but Cass, if he doesn't have a Hive, he can't build any of those things. Yeah. One thing about Serral, though, that is just superb is his creep spread, and that really makes him feel safe with just reason. If you're going for Hydra, Link, Bane, it is very, very difficult to attack into, and I love what Sol is doing in terms of like how many tanks he's getting, because I think that that's the right unit to get in this sort of uh, situation. But we, like, again, like going back to that to that game, I believe we, s or I asked Cyril about a game that he had against Innovation, where he was trailing something like 40, 50 supply behind. And and when I was watching, I was like, oh, Cyril, Cyril's in a lot of trouble. And when I asked him about that particular game, he said, uh, at what point did you think I was in trouble? Because <laughs> uh, I was like, well, when you're 50 supply behind, and he's like, yeah, but he can't attack me. 
and, and he couldn't because of the creep. And we're in kind of a similar situation, except that Sol has a lot more tanks than Innovation had. So I think that he actually has the, the potential to leap forward, but it's going to take him a while. And so Serral will feel safe until Sol is um, approaching a rival. That's a tricky part, right? You're, you're talking about that creep spread. As a Terran, you feel very, very claustrophobic once you step out onto that creep. And here's some of them with that Baneling target fire that you were discussing earlier. Serral does want to try and push into this, but no. If he grabs the one tank that's dangling in front, and then it pulls straight back. There's way too many sieged up at the bottom of that ramp, I saw. Yeah, I would love for Serral to actually break those rocks with the uh, Hydralisks, as they, as they could do so without... I, I'm guessing he's the one that started breaking the rocks on them. So would have pushed him back. Serg really benefits from uh, this more open space, especially against the likes of tanks who do a, um, AOE damage. But at the same time, this isn't mutiling Bane, so you know there's not that much or as much need as surface areas with that with that particular army composition. So we'll see. But uh, but it looks like that's the place that Sol wants to attack, and so that's that's the most important point of contention right now. And these rocks are gonna are gonna help. He's got his tank staggered very well. Mm -hmm. He's not actually been able to encroach on the base with this setup, but if he continues to leave Frog, there's there's some time there. Yeah. The tanks uh, the tanks are good until Broodlords are out. I mean, but this is a huge surround that Sarah's trying to go for, hitting from 180 degrees in the siege tanks. They're able to get some good shots off, but there's so many Danelings that once the tanks are cleaned up, I'm not sure the bio can just directly engage into this. Yeah, and I love that Serral just retreats. He does not overcommit. He cleans the tanks up, and now he's pretty happy with his position. Now, the one thing that Sol gained from that is a lot of terrain with creep spread, and in the back, he has been transitioning. He is going for the Liberator range and ready to add ghosts as well, as well as the plus three, plus three, which I'm not sure how, but Serral has also started it, despite losing his lair not too long ago. Yeah, no, he got, he got straight up that high very quickly. Mm -hmm. His adrenal glands is almost done. Chitinous plating and starting, so it's going to be Ultralisk tech first, is what it looks like. Yeah, and you gotta love this. I mean, I you, I have to wonder also if with the, with all of these advantages, if Soul could have capitalized a little bit earlier, like if he had just leaned a little bit faster and a little bit stronger on that push. Yeah. The problem for him is he's played Serral so many times that if if Serral cleans that push comfortably, then he's back in the game. So I think what he was doing was some middle of the road type thing, where he is still, in my opinion, in the lead just by virtue of transitioning into this late game very, very strongly, right? We saw yesterday how the how the transition into the late game, late game by Vindicta was the, the more difficult part of pulling this sort of style with the Liberator range on the Ghost. Very nice. Yeah. Turns the Banelings around as he realizes he won't be able to get the workers, but he can kill the Planetary. And, well, that's just another great benefit for a Terran here of having built so many command centers for yeah. the mules. I one of them uh, to, uh, to turn into another PF. I think this is good for Sol, actually. That many banelings for a planetary when you have this many command centers, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, as a, I think the big thing is you want to be able to reset baneling counts regularly. I don't feel like there was a too many banes there that were killed for it, but there's a lot of vipers. He can, he can blinding club most of this or abduct, yeah. He will, but it won't last forever, so... Serral will have to back for a little bit. Abduct is going to be very good for the Liberators in particular. Blinding Clouds are going to be looking for clumps of tanks. Or stray tanks can also be abducted. So this is this is looking pretty nifty. A uh, couple of watchtowers here, not in the... A little bit funny Ooh. watchtowers. Double Nidus, cats. Mm, double Nidus all the way. What does it mean? Well, he wants to build two worms at once, probably, is what it means. Oh, absolutely, so, yes. Yeah. So he's I don't gonna know why else you would do that, but... Yeah. He's going to go to do two different locations and probably just choose the one that, you know, has the more accessible point and then just start loading and unloading from the other one. There's not too many Banelings here. Yeah, great focus fire. He cleans all of them up. Really good focus fire from Sol onto the Banelings. Yeah, he's exceptional at, at clicking, Sol is. So he's got that Osu practice down. He sure does. All right, well, the Nidus Worms are ready. Oh, two more Ghost Academies as well, Nate. So we are going to see uh, nukes, without Ooh, a doubt. Ooh, range Liberator. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot indeed, but the uh, first one will fall. The second one's still alive, but not for long. Ooh, no, no use in getting the range if you're going to siege onto the spores. But we'll pick off a base in the meanwhile. Do it. Click on the Banelings. Here. Sure did. This Ultra cannot die, though. There's only two Marauders, Ooh. and here come the two Niduses. You get Niduses in two places at once, that feel. 
in that field. And they're both usable too because the units are not in position. Well, some of them are in the main, and this is what I was talking about. You see some threat in one of the knights as you just load to the other one. So beautiful job by Seroth, as you would expect from him. Technology, man. Technology is fantastic. And he made so little cautious. as well, yeah. Yeah. Two Nidus's now popping out on the outer side. <laughs> a lot of Nidus's actually. Serral really wants the faster unloads. Serral watched the campaign videos. And <laughs> this is Hazard was made. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a it is a hefty investment, and he's really valuing the speed at which you load and unload right now. I'm not sure that it is the best, but he does have two Nidus's, and he is Serral. That's true. Doubting Serral is, uh, is a mistake that many people only make once. And he's going to come up on this base, kills it pretty easily. The Liberator with range is able to get some damage done. The Siege Tanks blast away. One Ultralisk goes down. Second one, very low, does get picked off. So he's going to be able to hold this here. Blinding Cloud onto the Planetary Fortress is going to get rid of the range on it. But with this many SCVs, he needs to focus fire some of those down, I think, with the Ultra to kill it. Or maybe not. Never mind. Yeah. And wow. wow. Nuke is going on the natural base though right now. Will this a hit? And does it matter? I mean, there is a few drones there. The hive has taken already a little bit of damage, but Serral will notice not completely in time to evacuate all of it. So the ghost doing all right there for himself. Not amazing, quite honestly. At the same time, the fight continues as Soul capitalizes other? on the attention of Serral. I, I guess it was with the Liberator that he got up to 16 drone kills. Yeah. And if we look at the supply, I mean, favoring soul, but Serral with a bank, and the creep spread is the scary thing, right? Like, like you look at Serral games, and it's just creep spread everywhere. What do you do, Nate? Yeah. Whenever he decides, or whenever he feels like it's time to push across the map, he's going to have a less than easy time. And it'll, we see that overseer. Two Nidus's, once again. Yeah, this is a brilliant location for the two Nidus uh, usage. It gives him two different options to go for. Soul will capitalize on it still and take a base. And I wouldn't mind a consequent push to account for the fact that, that Serral can load into this. Now he's, he has some... Okay, finally he's using one of the Nidus's in the main as well. And uh, this is lovely. Lynx are just going to cut off reinforcements really, really well and potentially siege the production. So Soul has to respond to this. The Ghosts are going to be preoccupied with this, which is not where the Ghosts want to be right now. Nope. Cool by Serral, but at the same time, Sol did gain some ground on, uh, up at the north. Another nuke will be going down at the, at the same time. So let's see if this one lands. A little bit more unlikely. As it nah, it gets killed pretty quickly. Yeah. That one's less likely because it's in one of the more outer bases. Yeah, it's somewhere that Serral's already looking. Yeah. Lings get back into this base. And this has been some really good pressure, really good job done by Serral with the Nidus. I mean, the real focus at some point, like if he doubles down on a, the, one of the Nidus's in the main base, mm -hmm. that's generally like the big weakness for Terran, right? Is keeping the production safe and protecting that. Yeah, you almost would have liked Farcel to, to commit a little bit harder to that, but at the same time, Sol was pushing with such a strong army that Serral needed to show force uh, back at home. So I really like this game in general. Both players are playing a brilliant game, really, as a Sol is continuing to make three nukes at a time. So that is not going to stop anytime soon. He really needs to keep the creep in check. He has done a great job up at the north, carving some of those paths. But, uh, ooh, a little bit Ow. of pick up there. But, uh, yeah, this these middle bases are the greater point of contention. If you kill one of these middle bases, then you, you basically cut the map for Serral. So let's see if he's able to do that as Serral pushes deep so into Soul's siege. So many Ultralisks and Banelings just crushed through absolutely everything. The siege tanks were not enough. Some good snipes are going to grab a couple of exit frags on the Ultralisks, but Soul, look at that supply again. Cats, it's down about 60. Not looking that great anymore, and I feel like Soul has been playing a fantastic game, but Serral has just been on top of his economy all, all the entire time. Another thing that I would love to see a little bit more of is these Liberators, especially with the tanks or with the Ultras coming online. I feel like the tanks aren't doing as well as they were earlier. I'm not sure if he feels the need to have a, lo a lot of them, I, I, but you know, he's, a, he's a, a late game expert, so difficult to question his choices here. He, he does have a very complex army to control as well with Liberator tank ghost. It's a lot to ask of anyone to, you know, siege and siege, snipe and and stim and and run back and micro and make sure your medevacs don't die all at once. Yeah, 
So the Ultralis is coming up on top of this base. One of them is going to go for the Marines trying to protect this. I think three Ultras with the Hydra support break this pretty easily because he has yeah, his SCVs. Runs to the outside. That tank getting some value, at least being able to shoot the two Ultras at once. But, man, Soul's really hanging out. But this just looks like I'm watching one of those campaign <laughs> scenes where the tank yeah. gets overrun. Where yeah. It's like, yeah, go down fighting, men. And then we're all going to die. Like that, uh... That mission, that one mission on Brutal that, that they had us do, I think. Uh, it's like the second mission, for one of the first two missions, yeah. The defense, the, the, the endless Zerg attack. Yeah. You. Oh, you mean... No, I, I mean meant the really difficult one really later the, on, the, yeah. The, the where Kerrigan shows really? up eventually, for some reason. Ah, yeah. Cyril is Kerrigan, basically. Yeah, that's terrifying to think about. Do you think Cyril would look as good in heals, though? Hmm. That's the real question. Yes. Glad we were able to break that one down for everybody. <laughs> He's trying to get another nuke off. He has yet to find any real success with it. And these Baneleys, even off creep, he's fine chasing this army. There is just so much Zerg. The Ultralisk, supported by this many Banelings, standing and fighting. It's almost impossible to take a cost-effective fight with the bio. You need to have a ton of Liberators sieged up. So that nuke's gonna land. Five drones are killed. And the ghost is lost, so I don't know. It's hard to see value in these, especially since he hasn't been maxed in a long time. He yeah. calls down a mule defensively. GG. It's I mean, you gotta you gotta like the nuke because at least Cyril kind of stopped. If you looked at his army movement, you know, because he was yeah. moving the nuke. So I mean, the idea from Soul's nuke there is, hey, like you know, if you're gonna keep chasing me, then I'm gonna nuke one of your bases, and, and I liked it a lot, but. Uh, man, just how do you break this, man? It seemed it seemed like Soul had a lot of really strong moves. I think it comes down to that first clear of all the tanks from Serral. Yeah, in, it was like catching Soul in the transition. Yeah. All died. Yeah, no, you're right. And he didn't even do it with Vithors either. Like it was just really good engagement. He came yeah. in. He had the he had a 180 degree arc around everything on him. Like there was there was absolutely yeah, and units just appeared. Yeah, he summoned them. They unburrowed out of the ground even though they didn't exist, like they were spawning <laughs> the editor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, a great game from Seoul. I think it shows a lot of promise. I think that is one of the surgiest, serial list maps in the map pool. If you look at it, it's... Play Bio versus Serial 2. I don't know. I think that's what just what Seoul does. So, And again, Seoul receives heavy praise from Serial himself as far as like being one of, if not the best European Terran in the late game. It's a shame that perhaps being the best late game European Terran still doesn't matter when you're playing Cyril. He's good. He's yeah. really good. At the same time, again, I would have loved for Soul to capitalize on his early lead because he did have one, right? Yes. Especially if if Cyril is re-teching up to that hive as fast as he did, there must have been a window. Yeah, there was, no, there was a big window. You're right. Yeah. He couldn't get Vipers or Broodlords. Mm -hmm. Or his 3-3 started. And then by the time However it happened, Sol was getting his 3-3, you pointed out. You're like, well, Cyril's already also got his pretty close. Like, how does this even happen when he gets the right. denial? Yeah. And uh, and what it is, is Sol used that opportunity to try to enter the late game against Cyril on this map, right? Like, he made a lot of command centers. Maybe instead of transitioning from there, he just nukes. punches the gun. Yeah, that's what I would have liked. Maybe you add some more production. You are near max. You have a lot of tanks. Keep going and leaping forward, perhaps, instead of... But I mean, playing against Harold, right? It's so, it's so difficult. Yeah, this is the part where I give my terrible unsolicited advice of I like Widow Mines. I feel yeah. like the tanks didn't really do a whole lot that game. Gonna be honest, I don't think the tanks really did much of anything. Uh, I like the tanks against Hydra Ling though, or Hydra Ling Bane. Yeah, it was when your opponent gets those types of spreads. I feel like I'd rather my tanks be cheaper and maybe cloaked. I don't know. Yeah, it's really Maybe hard. A mix. You when you do a mix too. when you watch Cyril dismantle somebody, it looks like there's no right answer. So yeah, and that's just a byproduct of how good Cyril is. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Sol can do it though. At least take one game. I think he could. Uh, that that game was very very promising. I think if he's able to capitalize on those advantages, if he can find them again, his early game, his mid game was superb, and uh, his late game was going somewhere clearly. So. I think uh, this is a great match to start the day off. Oh, indubitably. Always fun to see some good European TVZ. And I think yeah, I can speak for everybody in the StarCraft community when I say it's also always just fun to watch Cyril play.
Yes. He can make anything work. He does make anything and everything work most of the time, and even when he does lose, it's usually some marvelous spec spectacle. Yeah. I mean, we, when we were talking about how how behind Cyril was, I made a a parallel to a game where where he was where he seemed equally behind, but it's that creep spread, Nate. It's so difficult to push into him because he always has the creep spread so far out and he's so good at shielding and defending it, that even if he's trailing 30, 40 supply behind, he, he seems near unbreakable. Yep. He also doesn't take any risks. We talked about this. Like It's not like he committed to a super crazy all-in last game, mm -hmm. but he went for pull first. Zero pull first's a lot. He's, he's just not... Six links that didn't do anything. Yep. He's yeah. not going to die to a cheese, is basically his MO. Yep. He's like, I've reached the point where I can outplay people so badly that I do not mind giving up a slight economic edge at the start of the game, just to, make behind, sure, yeah. just to make sure you can't kill me. Plus, he always gets to keep the Reaper at home, or he gets a command center cancel, potentially. Right. So another Reaper will be made. I think this is a little bit uh, friendlier of a map for, for Soul, perhaps. But, uh, is it? Um, yeah. I don't hate it. I mean, just to, by the nature of the way that there's like multiple angles getting around, I don't think it's, a, it's an issue. Although, Cyril's not the one to do the weird stuff in this uh, best of three, right? Like, it's, it's a, pretty much all the weight is on Soul. Yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of weird for most players. This opener from uh, Cyril just playing, it. <laughs> like he's not even going across the map with all of his uh, with all of his links. He's just like, I'll make six links and make sure you're not proxying me this game. Yeah. He's wow. expecting the Reaper, I think, as well, to try and come out against that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, he wants he wants for some of the links to to get out. I'm not, did Soul spot all six of the links? I think the SCV walked past all of them in the middle. Okay, okay. And then he split them up. Yeah, then no no use even in pushing for Cyril, and that's what he's doing. He's just chilling. He wants to get maximum value out of every Zergling, so there's no need to throw any of them away early on here. Reaper's going to continue to look for wherever the links are hiding. Yeah. Um, but it's not a fun feeling. You build this Reaper, it doesn't really end up, you don't end up being able to get the value out of it that you were hoping for. You I think you Hellions. got it. I think you got the value you were looking for. I mean, your opponent made six links. If it's not several, you're pretty happy if you're soul. Yeah, it just feels weird when you can't get across the map to scout with it. Like you, he's, it's, it's another side effect of just Cyril's opening is that he's making him feel like he needs to be a little bit safe. Because Cyril does occasionally bust out those super sick, you know, mega double deluxe all ins. <laughs> yeah. And those are just uh, <laughs> off of his reputation, right? As a macro player, he does that and you just lose. It's like, I choose to win this game. Okay. Cyril's, Cyril's like Ling Ravager rushes when he, when he gets angry. When he, you know, it's like he gets like the red glow in his eyes. That's his Ravager Biles are terrifying. Yeah, and you just have to accept it at that point, right? It's like, oh well, it's all all in me. What do you do? So, this is where that Reaper can get more value, though. If you keep that out in front of the Hellions, a little poking, a little prodding. I think the Overlord saw that Medivac boosting out, though. So, he needs to be aware of a potential for a elevator play. That's gotta be it. There's uh, not really much to do here for this medevac. The queens are still out at the front, at least two of them, with another two or with one in production and only one queen at the main. This overlord will spot the medevac however it needs. So I don't know. I feel like this could be good for Soul. Let's see if Sarah evacuates his drones fast enough. Can he get a move on? Drones are still chilling there. Gets one. That's a lot of links. One Hellion dies, so trades uh, trades a Hellion for a drone. Two SCVs died somewhere. Yeah, a lot of links on pretty fast speed. I feel like Sol could have pushed in a little bit fa uh, further in before the first and only shot that he got, essentially, for the Hellions. Could yeah. have built maybe three, four drones instead of the one. But uh, this is something that's difficult to do as a turn player, right? Like, you want to you wanna use your attack as early as possible and as often as possible because that's what seems most efficient. But, you know, if... If you were on a timer and only have one time for one attack, like was the case here, then you'd rather go in a little bit deeper. And, uh, he will do the same thing, just skirting on the outside, and we'll be happy with one drone, whatever, whatever uh, blood you can get from from the god. He's so good. Oh, yeah. My liberator, completely smacked down. 
Yeah, and I mean, you have to give credit for to Sol as well for doing this as well-timed as he is. The Liberator arrives at the perfect time. It matters not. Good. So he's going to grab a few lings there with his Hellion uh, harassment group. But at the same time, there's that 1-1 one, one back home. Getting up to the three barracks. Stim, almost ready. Upgrade leads are pretty nice if we can maintain them against Zerg. Yes, indeed. There is a three, uh, third command center here as part of the wall of from Sol as well. Uh, I would love to see something like a 1-1 one -one timing from Sol if he can. He's been doing a very good job of keeping these Hellions alive as well, but I don't think he morphed them into Hellbats last game to, no. to aid with... Uh, yeah. He had two. He had two Hellbats left over from when he made the first like two tank push, but other than that, no, it was barely anything. Do you know where they died, uh, the Hellions? I, I didn't quite catch it. The majority of them? I think yeah, they just got it. grabbed by Ling's on creep or something. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that could have been a difference maker as well, because Hellbats are so tanky, right? It doesn't matter that they won't do a lot um, in the later skirmishes. It matters that they shield a lot for... They provide a lot of meat for the Marines and the tanks to output their DPS. Yeah. Indeed they do. 1-1 one, one is on the way now for Serral. But uh, Sol, if he decides to do something and he tries to hit like a 1-1 well, one, one timing again, he will have a sizably chunk of a window to try and do something. The problem is the creep spread, right? It's already everywhere and you have to clear it before pushing like this. So, uh, so, so that's kind of the, the caveat with Serral. It seems every game it's just he prioritizes creep spread so very hard, and it is always so far out that uh, even if you think you have a window. And yeah, look at that, he's got speed banes on creep, like, trying to get the good target fire, but it's really hard to maintain that, and also macro at home. 63 workers for Serral to the 60 of Soul. Many would argue this is a fine position for the Terran player still. But this is just, I mean, it's not like Cyril's giving anything up. He's just playing safe and creep spreading. Yeah. So he's going to give Sol all the opportunity in the world. Whether Sol can capitalize on that opportunity is, uh, well, it's an entirely different discussion, Cats. Yeah, that's the thing is when, when, when we watch most games of StarCraft, they're a little bit easier to tell um, based off of things like the supply or the worker counts or things like this. But when you watch Serral, he's so very methodical in, in his approach that, again, he doesn't feel like he's behind him. Oh, this is a great position for Sol, though. There's no creep spread or a lot of creep spread, and he found a very similar position last game as well. Uh, and that's kind of what he needs to do to capitalize on these timings is find the one spot where there's no creep and, and try to push from there. He needs to kill that creep tumor, though, really badly. Because uh, he needs to be able to kite back, and Serral is getting ready for a wraparound as well as he harasses on the other side of the map. Nice Reaper and Marine will spot it from Sol, but will that be enough? To oh, the Hellbats clumped up, though. Oof. Oh. Siege tanks are going to get surrounded. The Bane flank doing wonders. Does lose pretty much all the Banelings there, but at the cost of, uh, well, I think all it was it, worth yeah. it when you look at the supply. Yeah. A lot of SVs out on the other side of the map thanks to those Zergling counterattacks. <laughs> So they, another thing that Cyril, oh. Cyril and Rainer have become infamous for. Yeah, they are just absurd at uh, getting links into your into your base, and you know, it's very small numbers of units. They are able to work their magic with. He's going to move that fourth command center out. That is, that's not a bad call. Just holding on to it is going to be very difficult if Cyril sniffs this out. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's. Feeling pretty difficult for Sol. The, the creep spread is going to continue to to be denied. I think that he found a good position because there was no creep there, but at the same time, he had the Hellbats clumped up, the tanks, and, and he was also engaging from the low ground, right? So you give right. up you give up the, the the advantage of engaging off of creep, but you're but you're taking a disadvantage in engaging on the low ground as well. So just a difficult situation from Sol. Difficult to fault him for it as well. I think that this earlier Queens from Serral maybe is uh, is the reason he's so very good at creep spread as well. Like the earlier pulls. Yeah, his Link's counter. Adrenal Glands is not done yet. It's on its way, but just gets a good couple pickoffs. 2-2 two -two is finishing now for Soul. So this is going to be the last little upgrade advantage that he's going to have for a while. Yeah, because in keeping the Reaper back, I feel like the Creep Tumor is a little bit more free, too. That might be it as well, with the yeah. pool first. Yep. 
There's, uh, there's like, hey, there's like so much you could try to break down and take away from everything that Cyril does. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's too smart. Yes, indeed. Widow mines are um, being added and researched. I like it. Yeah. Drilling claws. I like it. I like Stuff. it a lot. Ultralisk is already in production, though. So this is kind of, you know, like last game we had the opposite situation as far as uh, supply and even trade efficiency went in favor of Seoul. And now we have the same situation reversed. It is very difficult to be optimistic for Seoul's chances here. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, he's been right in the struggle bus. There's just so much available to Sarah, like 24 Banelings and 73 Lings. Now he's got Adrenal done as well, so they're just going to be able to really rip and tear. The Ultralisk backup and support is going to be able to tank a lot of those mine shots and bring the rest of the army in. So Sarah would need to screw up pretty badly to throw this one away. And he's got a Nidus network finishing too, so I do think this is going to get uglier. It's one of these people. It it's, one of the, it's, one of, it's one of the spies that is going to provide the vision for the Nidus most likely. So he's just going to split them all over the place and then decide on the best location. There's a Ling block in the fifth. He's going to clean that up. I'm waiting for the Nidus. I want to see the little pop up. Yeah. And here's where I like the transition into the late game for Soul for sure, as he gets his Ghost Academy and uh, is starting to add some Vikings and so perhaps Liberators going to his 3-3. Because right now he is, like you said, riding the struggle bus. So he has to close that supply gap, and he has been. He is very nearing max. And if he can secure this fifth base, then maybe you can leap to a sixth and, and a seventh base down the line. So that's kind of the dream for him at the moment, to survive and trade cost efficiently. At the same time, Nidus is coming everywhere, and those ghosts do not want to be trading for links, in spite of how good that... Uh, I don't know why he gave up that choke. Yeah, no, that choke was actually really sick. Next Nidus is going to finish, but not going to be able to get anything out of there. And then he's going to drop another Nidus on the southeast end of the map. Yeah. Cyril doesn't give up. I mean, he forced him to rebuild that wall. He killed quite a few supply depots. And now he's going to try and maybe smite this planetary. Yes, indeed. Got to love the Widow Mines from Seoul. This is kind of a good way to deter from those Ling Rambais and make it so that Cyril has to pay extra attention to them. Another two Niduses going on. One Nidus right now. next to the third, so... Let's see, let's see, Knights. This is just madness. Yep, two more going up. One in the main, one in the natural. And Soul trying to deal with this as best as he can. At the same, uh, the same time... Ugh, at the same time, Cyril is going to be looking for a punch here. Good snipes onto the two Ultralists so far. This could be okay. Where he wraps the okay. Banelings around to hit the SCVs. Yeah. yeah, not enough repair, so the Ultras are able to kill it. And now they're just moving through. This is rough. He's got the, see that, that little that little white wave off of the Ultras. The quick, the quick boys. Yeah, resources lost is actually favoring Soul somehow. I think when you have this many bases for Cyril, you can almost kind of make it work, right? That's the yeah. I think we're reaching a point MO. of stability with uh, with Sol, and he already had that command center almost ready as well. So the food, so the fifth is um, is is not gonna take too long to come back online. Another one. Another one, indeed. I don't think Another this. these <laughs> I don't think these are gonna stop anytime soon. I'm not sure what the right response to this is either. Do you just leave two tanks sieged everywhere, or? It is a difficult situation when your opponent is macroing so hard that they can afford to do this and, you know, they're several, so they're just perfect. Yep. And uh, these Ultralists are going to take yet another base as the Niduses, and we just see the map, the minimap blinking, so there is too much to watch here. As Cyril is just absolutely everywhere and Sol is chasing it as best as he can, but it is so very difficult to keep up as... Uh, yeah, what, like, what do you even do? Cyril has been can... uncontested back at home, right? Yeah, no, nothing's happened on Cyril's side of the map this whole game. Not since that one push. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Sol really needs to secure another base. He really needs that, that, that fifth and sixth bases. He needs to get near maxed again. He needs Liberators, I think, to account for those Ultras. Ghosts in more locations, maybe bunkers, to account for some Nidus uh, Rambis in the main. Or, uh, or just maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know, Vikings to shut down the Overseers in the first place. It doesn't seem like there's a good move. That Seed Sink's getting some good shots on Banes, but... 
Yeah, again, like resources lost is still favoring uh, Sol, but that's because Serral is running so much to kill bases and economy, right? So he is playing to his advantage. So, so again, you might wonder and be like, well, how can how, is Sir go P then? Like, how? No, he's just leveraging his advantage. He knows what he has. He has economy to trade, and thus he trades economy for, uh, for or, or army for economy, right? Because he can make more army because he has more income. So even though he's trading inefficiently, he's trading often and he's killing bases and he's gaining ground all the time. So if this map goes split, though, then we're talking. That's where Sol wants this to go, right? Because he has been cost efficient. Because each of these Niduses do cost big money. He's killed, he's killed 12 Nidus worms so far. Well, that's 2,400 resources, um, not accounting for the initial two, which are another 400 on top of that each, right? Or 300? Is it 200, 100? Or? 100, 100. I don't build too many nice yeah. networks. Well, I do. I feel like I should know this, but I'm very bad with uh, numbers in general. I'm good at the maths, but I'm bad at knowing the values. So I feel uh, don't, that. don't ever consult me on anything. I don't know how much HP units have. Um, so HP I can do. Uh, I can do like HP of certain 635, I think. Yeah. Uh, cool. I don't know the HP of ultras, for example. Like these values are not too relevant once you know how you kill them and how fast you kill them. You, you know, you get a good idea. You get a feel for it yeah. regardless, yeah. No, that's fair. Those Widow Mines working way better than a lot of the tanks were before. So he's, he's created quite an anchor position. Indeed. So we're going to see a little bit of a push onto Creep to uh, try to mitigate this a little bit. I mean, Sol's still nearing maxed. He's still really looking to secure this uh, basis, and that's Cyril's game plan here is to keep shutting them down. Sol is not out of this game by any means, though, Nate. If he can stabilize, and, and there is a chance that he can, if he gets enough liberators, enough ghosts, stops the bleeding from the Niduses and secures the bases, tries to split one base at a time, split the map, then he will, if the if this tr this exact trend continues, he will end up winning this game by virtue of having been more cost-efficient. Yep. It's costing Cyril a lot to do what he's been doing in this map. Yeah. He is taking some, uh, some other more... You could say adventurous bases, such as that one. Yeah. Oh, this is a beautiful nuke. I love this one. Baby, yeah, hitting both Nidus Norns. Indeed. I don't, it won't kill the networks, but if it, the second one later might be enough. Yeah. Oh, it gets a lot of drones as well. This was a nice nuke, so kind of a repaint. That's his Nidus, his Nidus equivalent, right? And um, there is going to be two Niduses being cleared up for nothing as well at the same time as Cyril's attention was diverted. And. Uh, that's pretty good. I mean, those Niduses, again, they're expensive. How many Niduses have gone down, Nate? We are at 17 dead Niduses. Yeah, Die, Space Worms. $3,400. All resources. Just to simplify. And two more on the way. Yes, indeed. And if you got to be careful. Those, those Widow Mines. Oh, those oh, Widow Mines, God. Nate. That was very, very good. And chat for those banelings, guys. Yeah, this is actually huge. Uh, big swing there. The liberators also need to be there to zone out the ultralisks. So they, they really shouldn't. I don't think that they should be chasing so much here. Uh, but then again, you know, an ultra could always pop out of one of those Niduses. So I guess one or two would be all right to have available. These corruptors need to be countered by the snipes of the ghosts as the liberators zone out the ultras from killing the ghosts and that's the game plan here for soul for the most part the mines ideally are the ones that take care of those links or those bane links as the neither the ghost or the liberator will do a good job of that do it do it do it fine whatever what ifs i'd rather you kill the liberators anyway yeah were you thinking p yeah yeah, I, yeah, there's so much to pee on. And you gotta go. Yeah, you there's know? there's snipes as, as well available, so it's not like you can... Um, so you can't do it with impunity. Yeah. Because normally you would see the army coming, you're like, okay, I can't be anymore. But if you just get locked onto a snipe, then your corruptor is just die. There is additional command centers, soon to be planetary fortresses, I would hope to try and uh, gain terrain here. Lots of banelings once again being made. And I uh, love these liberation zones. I don't know that these mainlings will do anything. Nice job ba -ba -ba -ba. by Sol, who is a little bit low on the medevac count. That's for sure. His army is overstimmed. Yeah, well, you know, we don't we don't really see uh, vipers either. And parasitic bomb might be something that can help lock this this air situation up. 
Gotta say, last two minutes of this game, Nate, they have been all soul. I mean, Serral is really, really pushing non-stop, trying to end this game by all means. And I think that he was doing a great job. And I mean, he has been doing a great job uh, when he was denying that extra base. And that was kind of his game plan. But I think he kind of tunnel visioned a little bit hard on this is still my game plan. And he hasn't been able to deny further bases. And now it's Sol that's kind of getting to that split map situation. And again, if we look at the resources lost, just to uh, to to paint a better picture here, it is not looking that good for Serral if, we, if, the, if the trench continues. Now, the drown enemy in my blood strategy is a bold one, but it does not always give you what you want. Yep. Celebrator's going to get picked off in the northwest, and he's leaning more heavily on the air now, so that's yeah. going to open up that those snipes to be even more impactful. Yeah, it also opens up for a potential Bruddler transition, though, and that is uh, that is where we see, I think, Cyril go into a less I'm going to headbutt you to death type approach and uh, and takes a more delicate uh, my army's right here try to fight it approach still Sol has a very strong army composition even if Riddlers were to be added and he is uh, adding now some Vikings as well to help him. he's gonna bring this big force of Banelings and Ultras down to try and crash through this expansion once again as we have seen so many times before but I do like that the Banelings and the Ultras push the ghosts away and then the the Liberators get eaten by the Corruptors, so... Yeah, this was this was a huge win for Serral there. Uh, one of the few that... One of the few windows that he has found in recent time. The drones are trying to avoid the nuke. But the Ghost is killed instead. And, yeah. It is so difficult for Sol because he needs to find a way to consolidate his army for for the... Yep. You know, for the big wave whilst defending all of this Nidus is going on all the time. Right, so it's like ha, it's so difficult to split your attention and your army, and and it's usually Terran that's doing that to Serg, and it's Serral that does that to you. How do you your leave your base? Yeah, it is a difficult thing to do. I mean, yeah, at this point he doesn't really have the army composition to leave his base. He has the army composition that he wants to split the map. So uh, that is just kind of what he has to do: is play defense, 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 and uh, he's playing defense against one of the one of the most aggressive and best at aggression in the world at this point in the game, right? Yep. There's no easy way of dealing with Serral. There's another big Ultraling Bane wave is going to come over to the side, and there's just so much that can cover for those Corruptors. The Ghosts are not able to get snipes up on them, and he's not using anything slow like Broodlords, just Ultraling Bane, the Corruptors on top, all the Vikings go down, the Liberators totally dead as well. And Sol down to just 108 supply. You hate to see it, cats. Yeah, this uh, this was the breaking point almost certainly. Uh, Serral still has a bank. He has continued to expand. Even if the map was to be split, Serral would, would have mined more than half of the map even at this point in time. Even if Sol could somehow recover and, uh, and clear everything, Serral will have had a little bit more access to resources because he has taken the, the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock base already. So, this is looking great for him, especially after that. Soul is going to be reset down to nothing, and uh, he is broke as a joke, so it is, uh, it is a matter of time now. Yep. That's all I got to say. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's... Nothing to add. <laughs> he's dead. He is dead. This Serral played such a disgusting <laughs> good game. Greater Spire coming up. He's like, okay, well, what do I need to do to make you actually leave the game? Nerd! Yeah, I mean, a little bit of overkill in the Greater Spire, I gotta say. Like, How many Nidus's I gotta put in your man, you know? Yeah, he's gonna put two more for good measure. The Liberators are gonna try their best to zone off and try to continue to leap forward to take more bases. Commendable has been sold throughout in taking these, uh, these bases and gaining his own ground whilst defending against the Relentless Serral. This mines have been the MVP, Nate. Oof. Like, you wish he had made more, right? Like, like you see That's the... That's what I've been saying. Yeah, like, if you look at the value of the mines compared to every other unit in this particular game, they have done so much. And part of that is that Serral makes so many banelings. Like, he actually makes more banelings than most players, right? It's... Um, and not just by virtue of having the, the money and the, and for it, it's by, by virtue of preference, right? Like, he really likes Banelings. Mines are very, very strong against Banelings because they are very expensive units and, they're, and, and they are very small units, right? So 
they also very much tend to clump up, and they are much weaker if they don't clump up because one baneling doesn't really kill anything usually. No, it does not. Look at this infrastructure. Missing add-ons, blown up the tech. Yeah. Main command center looks like it's about to burn to the ground. Well, without a doubt. I mean, this SUV could save it if he's on the... No. Rip. Rip. And... Yeah, Sol is at 150 supply. A lot of corruptors yet again. And uh, if you look at the ground army of Cyril, it's pretty measly, right? Like, there's like three Ultralisks, a lot of Banelings. And this is every time that Sol has pushed them back. It's one Widow Mine that kills all the Banelings, and then Cyril's like, oh, I guess I just, yeah, I gotta go back. I have to go home. Yeah, take, a lot of, take a lot of losses, taxes. And uh, that might have been that might have been the way that the approach. I think, um, yeah, I think Sol perhaps tunnel tunnel visioning a little bit hard on on what is the most ideal unit composition type thing, uh, rather than adapting to how the game has been going and what his opponent has been doing. Another night is in the main. It's a lot of zerglings. Like a lot. Like a lot. GG. GG. Cyril takes the 2-0, and uh, Sol puts up a fight, but after 25 minutes of struggling, the jaws of the shark close around him. A masterclass by Cyril, a very good series by Sol, as one-sided as it looked. It's yeah. like you look at what he was doing and a lot of the things that he was doing and how he was defending, and you got to give him props for holding off as well as he did and for as long as he did. He had some good traits there, and um, he is not out of this group, so we will see him again. Yeah. That Cyril goes up to the winner's match. It's, it's such a such a treat to watch him play. It's He's so good. He's just too good. He's too good. Here's the rest of today's games for the final group of WCS Challenger Europe Edition. We got another Terran versus Zerg coming up for yeah. It's going to be France versus Germany again. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Lord versus Lambo is coming up on the other side of our break. We hope you're having a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in this big old wide world. And we'll be back after this with That's more Starcraft. 50-50 for me, by the way. Great match. Upcoming. Mm. Mm -mm.